is Colin Schaub. I'm the lead API engineer with Cargill. I'm here to talk to you about what we're calling reusable capabilities and how those capabilities have been evolving over the past two or three years. First, a little bit about Cargill. Cargill has been around for more than 150 years. We've decided that we cannot achieve our purpose without technology. Because we're 150 years old, we have many traditional foundations in place, which means we're steeped in legacy. We've also set upon ourselves a big purpose, which is to nourish the world in a safe, responsible, and sustainable way. So to set the stage a bit, I feel we need to talk a bit about what a reusable, what we consider to be a reusable capability. Three years ago, we started a journey towards modernizing Cargill's IT capabilities. We wanted to provide some commodity services and we wanted to implement reusable standards such as deployment, logging, monitoring, alerting, etc. We started by building three anchor products as part of a digital labs initiative. All of these we called our digital foundation. The oldest of the three we call the data platform. You can imagine a traditional data lake with Hadoop and lots of databases and tables and such. Cargill has so many legacy systems around the world with varying data formats and languages and structures. Almost all of this data gets loaded into the data platform in some fashion. The next is the cloud platform. Our cloud platform can be considered our operational infrastructure. It provides us with the ability to deploy to the cloud, provision data stores, monitor availability, alerting, and all the other capabilities one might think of when envisioning an IT landscape. It's opinionated and pretty strongly on purpose. Logging and monitoring are only provided if you stay within the guardrails. Think about source control for a moment. As a global IT organization, Cargill has source control systems of every variety. Having an opinion about which source control system to use has tremendous value. If you use this source control system, you can leverage the CI CD pipeline. If you use this control system, you are building history while at the same time building a community. The cloud platform decided early on that everyone should use a single source control system. And from that single source control system, you can derive all the benefits of these reusable commodity capabilities. Again, it was an opinionated decision, one that carried with it the many benefits of standardization. And logging. Everything is logged to a single SaaS logging solution. Everything. Our Kong logs, air logs, as well as logs for all the applications that we deploy to the cloud platform. This alone is transformative because we now have Kong's access logs right next to the API logs, and we can do quick correlations between gateway activity and upstream activity. The API platform came last in our evolution. First and foremost, we needed a platform onto which we could deploy the gateway. And second, we needed customers. There needed to be actual APIs to expose via the gateway. We're now in our third year and we have roughly 50 different teams from around the world, which are building APIs and exposing them via Kong. Maybe 400 to 500 APIs in our dev environment and fewer in prod. Dev is the testing ground where APIs may come and go over time, and prod is where they evolve to, where they're stable and used. We average from a few million transactions a day to up to 50 million, depending on project workloads. These numbers aren't particularly staggering, but the appetite for these capabilities was there as seen by how quickly teams were interested in using the gateway. 50 teams, all with five to 10 developers each, and Kong was there Kong was there and people, and people wanted to use it. And across these three foundational capabilities, we defined three high level core principles. The first was deferred commitment. We shouldn't add features until they're needed. Forget just in case, develop just in time. The next was agile and lean. Our teams are small and each team is only two to six people. 
we don't have the luxury of long development cycles or maintaining overly complicated infrastructures. And the last was we wanted to be a learning organization. We wanted to accept and expect mistakes and deal with the disappointments that they bring. And all three of these add up to a let's try some things and learn as we go mentality. So let's dive a bit deeper into what we call the Cargill API platform or CAPI. When we started out, we needed a roadmap. We needed a few core capabilities to bootstrap the platform. This was the easy button, right? It's why we're all here. It's but it's difficult to talk about Kong issues we've had because more or less, Kong just works and does what it's told and just keeps on keeping on. The only consistent issues we have with Kong is that because it is the front door to the many APIs we have, it's always the one to blame. Questions like the gateway is dropping my request or the gateway is timing out, the gateway is returning a 404, is the gateway even up? It's never been Kong, not to this day. We also thought we should have an API first design tool. Now, two to three years ago, there weren't many options. Swagger 2 was out and pretty popular. Swagger 3 was on the horizon and perhaps just released. And we chose a product based on API Blueprint because it seemed safe and actually pretty easy to read and create. It wasn't very popular though. One team used it and enjoyed it, but for the most part, no one was interested in it. The tool was recommended by a consultant we were working with at the time. The day after we signed up and had our first team working with the tool, it was purchased by one of the largest DB vendors on the planet. And well, we know where that went. That one team used it through the middle of this year until we eventually moved them off of it. No one else has ever wanted to use it. In the developer portal, we quickly found out that coming to the table with these preconceived notions of what the community was looking for was, well, pretty ill-conceived. It was the initial step of what we thought comprised an API platform. What would folks need? A gateway? Check. A design first tool? Check. A dev portal? Check. As it turns out, most of the developers at Cargill were using a top-down, code-first approach to API development, which I think is pretty common. Swagger libraries that used introspection to build a Swagger spec. And of course, Swagger GUIs. Lots and lots of Swagger GUIs. Pretty quickly, we learned that the level of interest for a developer portal just wasn't there. Right or wrong, no one really cared for it. And governance. That's governance with a small g. We wanted teams to be as free to create what they wish while steering them towards well-engineered APIs. We want them to be self-reliant but stay within the guardrails. Teams can create their own API policies, which are reviewed, approved, and deployed by the CAPI team. We also ask the team self-review via peer reviews. Get another member of their own team to review a PR before the PR is submitted to the CAPI team. This fostered knowledge sharing within the team and added a bit of a check your own work step while saving the CAPI team from unnecessary review of easy gotchas. Have someone on your team review your work before it's submitted to the platform team. This saves everyone time in the long run. Some things that we govern are paths. Since essentially we're working with a multi-tenanted environment of 50 teams, we needed a way to govern the uniqueness of these APIs on the gateway, as well as path meaning across hundreds of APIs. We help the teams do this in a nice and friendly way, of course. Security, we also wanted to make sure each API was, has the appropriate security and is using the most appropriate identity management solution. And of course at Cargill, we have multiple. Cores. We also govern cores. Why do we do this? We do this because we know that it is important to make sure that API teams have thought about this before deploying a policy to the gateway, because most APIs will be used from a web page of some sort. That's all pretty light touch governance. We also built a few reference implementations, and I cannot emphasize enough that having a small collection of reference implementations is super valuable. We didn't realize how much so when we started. You can imagine a deployment pipeline that hides most of the complexities behind Kubernetes and provisioning relational databases 
and distributed caching layers, the missing link, so to speak, is how to wire all that stuff together. Database connections, connection pools, secrets, health checks, SSL, SSL only Redis caches. What does my logging look like? How do I find my app's logs amongst the cruft of all the other app logs? All of these individually are small units of work that add up to a lot of work for a team that is new to cloud deployments maybe isn't all that adept at modern development practices to begin with. They're learning. And thus the beer demo came into existence. It was maybe not the first reference implementation we built, but it was definitely the one that gained and maintained traction across the organization. Simply put, beer has nothing to do with cargo. We don't actually sell beer, although we probably in some way handle the malting grains. But the point is not that people can't the point is that people can't argue about property names or an enti entity relationship if it has nothing to do with Cargill. We don't need to argue about the definitions of a contract or a customer if it's just beer. Keep the users looking at the task at hand, which is building and deploying an API. Beer is something you can have a quick chuckle about and then move on to the nuts and bolts of building a robust API. Something concrete and simple that just works that people can touch and experiment with. Teams can fork and deploy their own instances of the beer demo and watch what happens. Kick the tires a bit, look at the logs, view the CPU usage, learn how to play with an application in an existing infrastructure. Which leads us to community. This is where we see the most excitement, the most appetite, and the most actual need. The technical stuff is awesome. Kong does all these really amazing things. It works, right? Kubernetes is super awesome. Service mesh, mesh is super awesome. We started out simply calling it socialization or socializing a API gateway concepts, but it quickly led to much more. So what did we do to build our API developer community? How did we bring people together from across the globe? Much like we think of Kong as a product, Cappy is a product. We open ourselves up to criticism and interact with some of our most consistent users and ask them, are we doing what you need us to be doing? Customer Advisory Board. In a recent CAB meeting, we listed the high level deliverables of our upcoming release. As Cappy, we'd been talking about GraphQL since the end of 2019. We saw it as an interesting technology we were wondering if teams were interested in us pursuing this as a platform capability. One team said they discussed it, but decided to not pursue it due to they, what they perceived as difficulties of managing security across entities within the queries. Interesting, but officially not interested due to security concerns that they didn't want to address at that point in time. Another team was happy enough with their restful approach and didn't see the need yet. As I mentioned earlier in the beginning of our journey, we had thought that obviously developers would benefit from a developer portal. They may have, but we couldn't force this because the developers just weren't ready for it. When we brought it up at the developer, at the CAB meeting, the developer portal again with team leaders, we just received a resounding, nope, not interested. Basically came down to their current working models being good enough. They had Swagger documents, with which their APIs generated and exposed and they were happy enough using that. We also talked to them about Canary releases. Not very interested here either. Again, the current processes were working. At this point in time, basic API gateway functionality was enough for now and developers weren't ready for more. In a large global IT organization, it's often enough just to keep the status quo. Adding too much complexity too fast can upset the apple cart. Not trying to force complexity where it isn't wanted, we set out to help the user community more. All of our platforms use chat ops as the primary form of communication. To many, this seems like a no-brainer. Everyone uses chat ops nowadays. But for Cargill, this was new. First and foremost, we're trying to grow a community and move people away from problem solving and requirements gathering via email. We provided them a common discussion area to talk about APIs. Sometimes the discussion go off topic a bit, but that's okay because it's a community. We're building a community. Already you can have developers refer to existing conversations about memory issues or networking timeouts by pushing them towards a collaborative developer environment with the goal being to allow other developers to, to participate in helping other developers. It's 
always a good feeling you get when you can help someone through an issue they're having that you've maybe suffered through before. We also hold weekly office hours, these Ask Us Anything events. Once a week for an hour, we host an Ask Us Anything session. Obviously, this worked a bit better when we could do face-to-face -face meetings, when this was still safe, but this is still possible to do now that we have all the modern video conferencing tools. Sometimes we have no customers. Sometimes we discuss the same things over and over again. But given the chance to ask simple questions without criticism, people take that opportunity whenever possible. We also hosted a few road shows. We took Cappy to the people we took Cappy to the people, so to speak. It is one thing to, 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 to participate online. You can sometimes feel the excitement just by using maybe the number of questions in the API engineering lounge as a measure. But this doesn't always show the underlying enthusiasm. Showing up and holding local office hours in the same time zone as a face-to-face. -face. We didn't realize when we planned the trip, but when we got there, we basically had a line of teams waiting to discuss their projects. They wanted that personal interaction. As an anecdote, we spent a week in Bangalore with our offshore dev teams just getting to know them. During one meeting, we were diagramming the cloud infrastructure and talking about how to deploy an API. I asked the group I was talking to what languages they were most familiar with. I did this to get a sense of the target languages they might be using to build their APIs, thinking of the beer demo, .NET, Java, Python, whatever. The first answer I got back was, I am proficient in English. It made for an awkward laugh where I re-asked and tried to make perfectly clear that I was not questioning their proficiency in English and tried to turn it into a selfie facing, whoops, didn't mean to say that kind of response. Six months later, you know who shows up in chat ops? Mr. I am proficient in English and I know exactly who he is and I can share a brief laugh about it from 13,000 kilometers away. All because we went out of our way to go and meet them in their home territory. We also hold monthly demos where the topics might range from the mundane, like CAPI operations, we're going to upgrade this Sunday morning, to the exceptional, like GraphQL. This is similar to an agile demo, but the audience is often much larger and cross-cutting. We get everyone from the developers building and deploying APIs to managers who want to just check in because they've heard about CAPI. Sometimes they're boring, sometimes they're exciting, but the point is that they're very regular. Every team does them, and the community comes to expect them. Over time, people get, begin to participate more in all of them and share knowledge across demos. The last thing we do is we have customers demo at our demos, because it's not always just about CAPI. It's about the work that the community is doing. GraphQL is an example of the customer community trumping the cab here. When we asked project leaders about GraphQL, no one, did, no one was interested. GraphQL did, however, come up from the business service API community organically. It was a true Facebook story. The team was continually seeing requests for specific single purpose APIs. Unable to keep up with the demand, they built the very first GraphQL API and demoed it at our monthly demo to the larger API community. This piqued the interest of the analytics community. We had connected a small team in Bangalore with the quants. This was pretty cool stuff that's been growing ever since as the team started to talk graph DBs and taxonomies. All of this from a little team just trying to make their lives simpler. The next community event we hosted was an executive API training seminar. We did it for nearly a day. We talked about the ever popular Amazon API mandate that's been transformative in Am Amazon's growth from just books to into technology. We talked about how the iPhone revolution is also seen as a driver for API growth. Everyone there had a cell phone and we showed them how APIs are used in the, a in the apps we all use each and every day. This is all pretty obvious stuff, but to the average smartphone user, the fact that APIs are what allow them to have the cool technology that fits in their pockets is often another light bulb moment. And finally, tacos. At the end of the day, we had them build and deploy a simplistic taco API. Our taco API is the hello world of our reference implementations. 
built in Ruby, maybe 20 lines of code. Each participant forked the repo, uncommented a line of code, and deployed their Taco API. Do I don't know how many managers were interested in APIs after this session? All of them. We also had tacos for lunch. And eventually, remember deferred commitment? Remember replacing just in case with just in time? Eventually, the need does come from within. Not from leadership, not from management, but from the developers themselves looking to simplify their lives. And this is what we mean by community and deferred commitment. When a developer community was ready, we were, we were almost ready. We've been tracking with changes coming out of Kong regarding the developer portal. And when our community was ready for it, we were ready to commit. Within a few months, we had rolled out to the developer portal with automation that validates and uploads API specs and have been transitioning the existing Swagger specs ever since. Because the request came from the community ever since, the developer portal has had more of a community vibe to it because it was released right when they wanted it. The quick move from request to deployment of the developer portal created an exciting feedback loop with the developers who were excited to use it and it has since made it a better product for its users. We've since transitioned 50 to 60 Swagger specs to, to the developer portal and every time we show it to people, we are a combination of wow and a sigh of relief. Sigh of relief the developer, that the developer doesn't the developer now has one less thing they need to do and a wow that it's actually being used as if they were late to the game somehow. And again, the beer demo, specification loaded into the dev portal, consistency and repetition. We can spend lots of time thinking about better platforms. We can plan, roadmap, execute. All of this matters and it's very exciting stuff. But what really matters is building the community around the platform and allowing the community to steer and guide the platform in ways that are most helpful to them. Providing a developer portal seemed like the right thing to do in the beginning of the journey, but in hindsight, the user, users weren't ready for it yet. When the community was ready, the deployment of the developer portal felt more like a community-driven effort and had more energy because of that. The API first design tool also fell into this category. Engaging with the developer for community in a meaningful ways that are both personal and helpful, we ended up with capabilities were, that were developed and delivered in the right way at the right time, making it feel more collaborative, rich, and vital. Thank you very much. Thank you.